What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas here and I'm In today we are playing a free for all match on the brand new map Mordor in Battle for Middler Fun on the patch 2.22. That's gonna be the first time we play on this map and hopefully you guys will enjoy and we will get to play the Gondor faction, the White City. Okay, I take it, I like it. And obviously this map is also gonna be included in the upcoming version of the patch 2.22 which hopefully will be released in about two weeks from now. So stay tuned because lots of incredibly efficient changes will be implemented. And hopefully you will enjoy them all. It's like a big map, as you can see in the minimap. Like it's divided in four pieces. And I like this map, you know. We are making, as you guys know, multiple new maps. And this is just one of them. But not the last one. And also not the first one. Okay, so let's... Oh, that's a good faction. And we can also creep a lot. Like... Basically, each player is given the chance to get two free farms. And remember the golden rule in free for all matches? You are not allowed to buy a second castle. And when I play free for all games myself, I genuinely like to push a lot. Because the more you fight, the faster and easier you will be able to collect power points, which for the Gondor faction is essential. Because Gondor is the best power point spell book from all factions. You have like additional summoning compared to Rohan. You can, you know, summon the Rohirrim for the reinforcement. And also the Eagles, dude, the Eagles are just so good, guys. Like, Eagles can kill any hero within seconds. They have an incredible DPS. They can even kill Gandalf, one of the most expensive heroes in the game, with like two shots, you know? They are so good. Okay, let's build one more farm, and then we're gonna go for the stable right after. It's a huge map, so having mobile units on the field is obviously gonna be a good choice. But we might need, later on, also need um, archers. Just in case, you know, there is like an Isengard, we need to deal with pikemen or eventually even a Mordor, so we can deal with them. But first of all, let's creep this with the soldiers. We don't even need to use heal eventually, but I might need to use it. Nah, we don't need to use it. Easy creeping, creeping 101. And let's buy another farm. And now, in total, we have three farms outside, which is pretty good, because each of them is going to increase the food bonus we will get. And each of them is going to make the Gondor Knights cost a bit less. Make them cheaper. You can also creep this one right off the bat. Okay. We don't know what the enemy players are doing. Like, we don't know if they are fighting against each other or if they are also trying to creep. But if we take the middle under our control, I'm going to be happy about it. Because we will increase the vision control and also overall the resource income quite a bit. Soldiers! Okay, there is another Gondor, but it looks like he he's scared. He doesn't want to contest us. He's scared. We can use heal now. Heal beside healing every damage unit to full HP. Also, replash, you know, replace one of the dead units from the battalion. Oh, he's saying go away. Ooh. Ooh, last samurai. Oh, that was close. Mary <laughs> Not Mary Rock. Peregrine took the full of a took. Almost got killed by a Vork. We are creeping a lot, actually. Look how many power points we are able to collect. You know, creeping is so efficient in this game, especially early mid game. Because early mid game, it's the time for you to struggle with the power points, but not for us. And if we can creep the third one as well, it's gonna be actually huge. Because there are not many more works. And in the center, there is also a troll layer. Right in the center, center between those four farms. And every single one of the farms is actually being protected by a worker. You see the troll layer there? We might also need to creep this one later on, but eventually we will need something like Boromi or Farami to do that. Because trolls are a mean one. Like, they are not easy to be crept. They are very, very strong and they would smash. I mean, you know, you can't even kill a, you know, troll with lords level 1 in sword. You can't. Like, the only heroes that can do that is actually, you know, strong heroes like Gimli, Aragorn or only Boromir. Because Boromir can knock them down on the ground. But if you cannot disable them or if you cannot burst them, they will crush you. <laughs> you know, they are just too strong. Okay, now we can also take down the settlement. Let's get... Look, look the map control, boys. We have like, what? In total, one, two, three, four, five, six farms outside. They are gonna be Ellen Mask, you know, of Middle Earth very, very soon. Look our base. We have full base already, just like that. Crazy. Crazy. Rally together, knights. We rule this day. Line up. Okay, and, you know, creeping, besides giving you additional settlement and also money, also gets your units to level 2, which is a massive power spike. 
Like, level 2 has to be the biggest power spike ever. Because you will get this additional damage and armor boost, but also you will have the ability for each unit to replace and heal themselves up automa automatically over time when they are not fighting. Look at the base, dude. We can go very, very soon for the, uh, for the upgrades and also maybe even for heroes. I want to actually recruit Gandalf. You know, I want to rush Gandalf eventually. Oh, he's creeping this, okay? You can maybe take this creep from him. Oh, yeah. Look, Faramir was trying to creep this. Trying to show his quality. There is Isengard. And we have... Oh my, okay, so we have double Gondor, one Isengard and one Mordor. You ain't stealing enemy... enemy. Oh, he got one part of the... Okay, Faramir has shown his quality. Okay. All right. I mean, Mordor is going to be tough because later on he will get the chance to recruit multiple Nazgûs and Witch King. So, for that reason, I'm sorry, Mordor, but you're going to be our first target. I see also Haradrim's up on the field. So it looks like you want to go for the, for the men of the east, you know, for the soldiers of Rune, for the pikemen. Which is good for Mordor because that gives you the chance to actually actively fight for the map control. It's very underrated. They are pretty much as strong as the Isengard pikemen. The only weakness of them is you have less units in the battalion, but also they are way slower. So Isengard is famous for the, for the strong and also fast infantry. That's the strength of Isengard. And Mordor is famous for the monsters and for leadership. And remember, unlike the Isengard pikemen, the soldiers of Rune, they cannot purchase any upgrades. They cannot have heavy armor or forge plate. That's not possible. The only upgrade they can get is the banner carrier. But again, you don't need upgrades because the way it works, you need to understand understand that, guys, please. You know, I'm just gonna try to explain it one single time. The armor from heavy armor gives you additional armor bonus in percentage. But the same you can get from a leadership. So, for example, heavy armor gives you 60% damage, uh, you know, damage reduction, 60% increase armor, but a 50% damage, uh, you know, armor leadership pretty much does the same thing. So, for that reason, if you have Witch King and Drummer Troll, it's like better than having forge blades and heavy armor. If you have darkness on top of that, it's just so much stronger. It's unbelievable. And leadership stacks in this game, unlike in Give Me 2 and in Rise of the Witch King, so that's what you need to play around for. Oh, I see crossbow man. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Oh, I'm coming for you. Oh, but that might be dangerous, though. Might need to heal them. Oh, he has, he has full towers. This guy has full towers. I'm gonna call the Rohirrim boys. Poor Eolingas moment. Poor Eolingas. We need to deal with the Gondonites. They are badly damaged. Oh, he has pikemen now. But it's okay. We are getting a lot of power points also. But also, we are feeding power. Okay. Rest in peace, Gondonites. When we can kill the Uruk, that's gonna be quite nice because he will have only one single pikeman upon the field. And he's smart to target and focus our Gondonites. Because I can afford to lose the Rohirrim as they are, you know, not there permanently and they are from a summon. But my Gondonites, if I lose them, that's gonna cost me lots of time and money because they have upgrades and they are also level 3. Okay, we killed the Uruk Pit. I don't think we can deal much more damage than this. We can fight this, no problem. Huh? We have obviously full upgrades, heavy armor, forge plate, and also the, the, the shields. We have still a great amount of map control, but I think we need to take care of this Mordor in long terms because he's just getting too much value, too much money from this Nightmare Mills outside. But I want to have Witch King, I'm not Witch King, you know. I want to have Gandalf on the field first before I want to make a move against Mordor. Knights of Minas Tirith. Onward, riders! Knights of Minas Tirith. Men of Rohan. Okay, I mean, the Rohirrim, they wouldn't be able to achieve too much. This other Gondor is going for the infantry. I've seen Boromi and Faramir and soldiers with heavy armor and forge plates. Very interesting. Very interesting, actually. It's not good, <laughs> you know? It's not good. It's good against Isengard, though. Like, when you have only Isengard opening and he has no war riders on the field, then it's pretty good. But against Mordor, it's horrible because regardless if you have heavy armor or forge plate on the soldiers, Claws are gonna still smash them on the ground every single time. Together, knights of Men Men is is here. The has and guys, quick question to you: um, you know, which unit from all the four factions in the game is your most favorite unit? I have to decide. It's hard for me to decide between the Rangers from the Gondor faction in the Rohirrim Archer from the Rohan faction. These are these two are the most favorite uh, most favorite units 
from me out of all four factions in the game. And I'm curious, what is your most favorite unit out of four factions in Battle for Middle Earth 1? Let me please know in the comment section down below. Maybe you agree with me and you say, yeah, ranges are cool. And I feel, I feel like they are so cool designed. Like the way they are looking, so mystery style, you know what I'm saying? Like they have like these hoodies, caps, they are hiding around, ambushing, you know, doing all this crazy stuff, attacking like a machine gun, hitting like a truck. I like their design a lot. And also Rohir matches are also one of the, oh, he has runes, but it's okay. Oh, he has Lourdes here, but it's, you know, we have obviously heavy armor plus the shields that also, in, you know, increase the durability, you see? Not even Cripple could one-shot us at this point. <laughs> they are just too strong. We have three power points in the bank, but we need to, you know, use two of them for the Gan of the White power point to turn the Grey Pilgrim into the White Rider. And as, as usually, map control, map control, map control, and you see... The other Gondor was not going for the for the Gondor Knight. That kinda is you know infantry is good, guys. Don't you know, don't be fooled by me don't not going for the infantry. But infantry is just slow. You no, know, it's just slow. On a small map, it's much better choice than going for the Gondor Knight. But on a map like this, look at this map size, you know? We need mobile units on the field to be able to effectively and fast fight for the settlements outside. We have a level 7 Gondor Knight, that's what you like to see. We have also Faramir and Gandalf combination, just in case there might be a Nazgul. If you don't know, if there is a Nazgul, and you have Faramir around with the Warning Arrow, and you combine this with the Easter Light from Gandalf, you can actually one-shot a Nazgul, from 100 to 0. So Easter Light plus Warning Arrow is enough. When it's a Nazgul, when it's a Witch King, it's not enough. For, but for a Nazgul, it's actually more than enough. I think we're gonna go for Mordor very soon. Let's heal up a bit. We have level 7 Gondor Knights. I'm also gonna build a marketplace because I wanna make money. And we might also need later on the Stormwalker. You know, there was a time in which I was always saying I'm, I don't wanna build Stormwalker. But then I started losing games against Mordor over and over again. And now I'm shameless, you know? I'm shameless. When it comes to fight against Mordor, I'm just shameless. I'm gonna build Stormwalker and I'm gonna camp it out. I'm sorry, but I have to do it. I'm sick of losing against Mordor all the time. If the trolls come with leadership, nothing can stop them. And if you have no only these normal towers around your fortress, they don't even deal damage to this insanely buffed and super strong trolls anymore. The Witch King, Darkness, and Elf Sauron, and Drummer Troll. They don't take any damage anymore. Unless you have Stormwalker, then they do take damage. Oh, there's a Nazgul, Bonding Arrow, and Easter Light. Come on. Yeah, he's, he's gone. He's gone. Or, or, yeah, he's gone. You see? Boom. And boom. The combination, the wombo combo. And Gandalf hitting level 6. This guy is only the runes up on the field. We can also blast them. Take this in your face, man of the east. Boom. Dude, Gandalf is such a cool design hero. It's my most favorite. I think if Gandalf would be not in the Gondor faction, I would not like this faction a lot, you know, at all. The reason why Gondor is so strong is because of Gandalf. You know, everything is evolving around Gandalf. Every gameplay, every strategy. At some point of the game, you will need him because he simply can counter everything. This is the only hero that can kill everything. Aragorn is also one of these heroes, but remember, Aragorn cannot deal with the flying heroes. But Gandalf can. He can deal structural damage with the lightning sword. He can crush EUD with the Word of Power. He can even kill Balrog with the Lightning Sword. Like, he has so much, so many possibilities, you know what I'm saying? He's mounted, he's fast as hell. If you don't know, every cavalry in BFME 1 has the same speed. The only two cavalry heroes that are outstanding the other units and heroes are actually Elma from Rohan and Kenna from uh, Gondor. They are slightly faster in compared to Gondor Knights, to Theodian, Elma, Eowyn, Faramir, Rohirrim Rohirrim marches. By the way, this mortar is falling apart. He has nothing on the field anymore. The Baradur is gonna fall just like in the films, boys. Very, very soon. He keeps rebuilding stuff, but I, I don't want to kill the Baradur. Why? Because I want to I wanna kill as many towers as I can to get more power points collected. You know, big brain alert, 200 IQ, boys. I'm, you know, by finishing him, then we get power points all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I might actually even let him live. Just so I can come later and finish him off with power, you know, with more power points. Because look at that. From the beast of Mordor 
and from killing these units in the Nazgul, you get already Eagles unlocked from the spare book. I think we are so much ahead now in the power points department, which is awesome. Okay. Oh, 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 the Mordo player left. Mundo is no more. I think he's triggered. <laughs> he's triggered. Okay. I mean, don't trample them, though. Just fight them in melee range, please. Okay, let me... Oh, my. If heavy armor in Forge play, they are so tanky against Gondor Knights. Don't trample. Just fight them in melee range, my dude. You have level seven, uh, 10 Gondor Knights. So Gondor Knights, when they fight alongside with Gandalf, they will also level up way, way faster because Gandalf is providing you additionally 100% combat experience. It means your units are able to level up twice as fast. But remember, in the patch 2.22, we overall nerfed the amount of combat experience each faction can gain. So, for example, from a drummer troll, we reduce from 200%. Oh, 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 oh. Can I do this? This is again of the gray from him. Who take this. I don't have heal, but I have the shield bubble. Do I need to use it? I don't think so. Okay, but we lost a lot of the Gondor Knights. We killed Boromir, though. That's good. Again, you want to use... Okay, my eagles are getting one shot. But again, you want to use the power points in most cases to get even more power points collected. That's what you got to do. It's very important. Oh, we can't finish him off, unfortunately. Uh, but it is so it is. He is on cooldown. Otherwise, I would go for an Easter Light on his Gandalf. But I don't want to lose my Gandalf in exchange. But if he can wait a little bit longer, like 10 seconds, our heal is going to be back up. Dude, pikemen everywhere. But we have still a great amount of map control. Look at our money. I mean, we have no money problem whatsoever. We can do whatever we want. I want to visit Plasm, actually. But they are going back into the... Oh, okay. Okay. I will let you live this one last time. Okay, I think uh, as we have no siege weapons, we cannot really do much against this Gondor. Our next target is going to be unfortunately for him, but they are going for the Isengard faction very soon. Let's sell them. And then our most favorite units, the Rangers. Knights of Minas Tirith, together. We must be vigilant. They need me. Fly, Shadow Fax. Okay. I'm also pretty tempted now to build, um, you know, Stormwalker, but let's not do it for now. I, because we have defeated Mordor, we don't really need to do this as we, as we are talking, but later on we might need to do it. I'm not gonna do it un unless I have to. I mean, the thing is, I have enough money, right? And what am I gonna invest the money in? I have enough Gondor Knights upon the field. I have four battalions of Gondor Knights with Gandalf. And now I will have also a lot of Rangers with Faramir and Boromir upon the field. And all the other money we can actually... Maybe we can also build lots of towers and trebuchet around the wall, you know? On the, on the expansions on the, on the wall. I want to kill this pikeman. Maybe Faramir can get some levels from it. And let's recruit now multiple trebuchet, which we will need later on to break through the wall of Gondor. And also to deal eventually with the Isengard army. Dude... This army is looking dope, man. Look, our Gondor Knights are being, you know, sent flying. Oh, there is another Gandalf. We are actually in a sentry situation. We gotta be careful about this. Okay, I wanna rush this Isengard. But as long as Lourdes is around the army, I cannot really approach with my Gandalf. Because when I try that, he will cripple my Gandalf. And then I will lose him. Because Gandalf is amazing, yes, but he's also squishy. Oh, Faramir, run. The pikes are gonna kill you. These are level 3 pikemen with forge blade and heavy armor. And oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Look, Faram is so slow, dude. Faramir, I cannot even get mounted. I will, I will die while trying to... I, I don't want to heal him either. I will let him die if I don't want to heal him, guys. I'm sorry, Farami, but your daddy denator told me to not heal you. <laughs> sorry, but dude, I, I need to save my heal for something imp more important, like your brother, for example. He even used Palanti on them. That's why he was able to run that fast. Okay. I'm sorry, Faramir. I'm sorry. But it's just like, gen you know, generally speaking, you know, healing up a hero like Faramir, who is only level 3, is not worth it if you have Gandalf on the field. When you have Gandalf on the field, you want to, you know, save your heal for Gandalf. Corv Eolingas. Come on, men, we have them. Um, we need to collect power points, but he has too many... Oh my, how many pikemen does he have actually in the base? Holy cock and moly, guys. We've improved the smithy. 
The problem is now every single furnace from the Isengard player is also level 3. And they are so extremely tanky. And also at the same time, see it, um, they are shooting. So we need more than one Gondonite to deal damage to this Isengard castle. And this guy is actually just focusing on the map control with the rangers he has. The problem is I cannot fight against him because he has more leadership than I do. Is Faramir and Poromir around? I think they are both, you know, level 4 or 5. But my Faramir and Poromir are only level 3. So I need Poromir level 4 and Faramir level 5 to be able to fight against Isengard and also Gondor with my army. There's too many combos now. Oh, I will dodge this lightning sword. He will miss it. Okay. I would love to go for a for a visa blast, but I think it's too risky. Because when I do that, he will just target me with the warning arrow from Faramir and the Easter egg from Gandalf. And I might get one shot. It. It's not worth it. Nice I want to engage on this one, but I think we need trebuchet. Without that, I think we cannot re really do much. But with the trebuchet, you might be able to deal with this. So if he wanna stay and fight, I'm down. Just we gotta we gotta kind of beat him in and kind of beat him to wait for us to engage, and then we will do that with the trebuchet. Okay, just peel back. We don't want to lose too many units for no reason. And micro around. Now we can engage. Now we have the DPS behind the lines. Oh, he knows that. He knows that. We will have also Firestone now. There we go. Nice. Now our trebuchet are gonna hit like an absolute track. They will hit so hard, dude. It will hurt. It will hurt you. <laughs> you know? Okay, I think we need to kind of... I don't want to go for the Gondor base yet. I think Isengard is more like a threat. And I want to focus down Isengard first. So again, what I can do is I can kind of force him into a fight with the Rangers and Faramir. And then, in the meantime, I can also rush his base with my Gandalf. But also, Isengard is peeling. He doesn't want to take a fight. We have also Eagles for the worst case scenario. We might always summon the Eagles to kill his heroes. Like Lourdes or Saruman, you know? Especially Lourdes. We gotta kill Lourdes, then our Gandalf can actually play the game. We will protect these lands. Okay, I mean, that's the fight we are looking for, boys. That's the fight we are looking for. Oh, nice shot. And now we can also rush the base at the same time. Macro is more important than micro in maps like this, at least. He took our ranges over with the warm tongue, but it's okay. Because we need to kind of force him to make a choice. Is he gonna watch for over his army? But, dude, the beast is just so strong from him, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we will lose multiple Gundam Knights. The only good thing is we got lots of power points collected, but we lost everything around this side. <laughs> dude, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe I should just commit with the Eagles. I'm gonna do it now. Kill Saruman if I can. Let's use the Alvin Wood to deny them the experience. Let's use heal. I don't think we can finish off Lords, can we? One more hit, Eagle. One more hit, Eagle. Nice, we finished them. That's very good. We have now nine and a half power points collected. We need only a bit more than a half for the EOT. Then his army is gonna be crashed from from the summon. I know it's lame, but you know the thing is in free for all maps, boys. The players they are getting much more money. Look at the map control we have, but the other players they have also lots of money. They can still do whatever they want. Like the Gondor is like full army with you know heavy armor, forge blade, fire arrows, Gana, Faramir, Boromir. And in order to hurt them effectively, you will need to use the EOD. I want to actually attack this Isengard one more time. And kind of play around the cooldowns that he, you know, he lost to Saruman and also Lourdes. Hmm. I don't know, man. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Maybe I will... I don't know. I don't know if actually going for more ranges is the right call here. Maybe I should just get more trebuchet on the field. Maybe that's... I don't know. But, dude, his beast is so tanky. What the heck? Do you guys see this? My, my fully upgraded Gondor Knights, they die in a second against this many towers. Okay, 
Okay. Oh my goodness, dude. And the thing is, he's camping, and camping Isengard are so hard to deal with. Like, if you if you play Isengard and you are you you have like an entire army inside your castle, it's very hard for the opponent to break through the defense. If almost easy, almost. I need to get power points. I need to kind of find a way to get more power points collected. That's the only way. I carry the must be hmm. Keep a lookout. Tough one, tough one, tough one. Rangers, move together. So prepare for battle. Steady now. I need to bring more trebuchet to this location and we must be vigilant. Okay, I think we will get the EOD and then hopefully with the EOD together we can finish off this Isengard then we can focus the last player, the Gondor player. I, will defend my I think he's not even close to the EOD because he was not participating in the fight. And I told you guys multiple times when I was playing a free-for-all games, you need to force fights. When you play free-for-all, you need to be involved into many fights, as many fights as we potentially can. That's the only way you can win those free-for-all matches. You need to fight all the time. That's the only way. You cannot win otherwise. You need power points. And for that, you don't need to camp. When you camp, everyone can ignore you. And by the time they come to you, they will have a lot of summons. And you don't have any summons to deal with that. And look at that. Would you look at that now? Boom. And boom. Now we go for the base. For the main base. He has many, many ballistas on the field. But we're going to kill them all. Every single one of them. And now we can go inside the base. We have also the ranger summon to deal with the pikemen. We can also summon Rohan, the fourth air wingers. Look at the summons. Like, we literally summoned a full army now. Rangers, Rohirrim, we have EOD. The Eagles are on cooldown, but it's okay. Now we can bring also these units. But he has too many pikemen, and my EOD is gone now. This guy's playing very, very smart, actually, with the pikemen, to be honest with you. Very, very smart. Um, oh, I wanted to kill the Orphan, but I think he got too many pikemen in the way. He's also very smart. You see that? He's focusing hardcore my Ganda with every single... Manually focusing my Ganda. Very, very smart player. That's what you are supposed to do. You gotta heal him now. That's what you need to do. When you see an uh, army approaching inside your base, when you play Isengard or, you know, any faction actually, then you wanna, when you have towers and buildings that can shoot, you wanna select them one by one and attack um, the heroes. The heroes, they will take so much damage over time and they, well, they might eventually die, every single one of them. Oh my goodness. I hate when this happens. I hate when this happens, when I actually go for a player. Now I have nothing available. I have no ranges, no... I mean, no ranges, I mean, no Rohirrim, I mean, no EOD, I mean. And my Eagle, I mean, is also on cooldown. Now he's coming. I have not much left on the field. Like, he has traps. Lots of units on the field. Oh, good. If he's on cooldown too, I don't know. I don't know. We cannot let them take this for no reason, you know? But luckily we have money. It means we got like lots of defensive eggs. <laughs> Look, Gandalf is getting shot in the face like multiple times. I want to go for a visa plus on this, on this location. Warning arrow on this Gandalf if we can. Boom! Take this in your face, son. Okay, we have heal on cooldown. We gotta pay, pay attention. We have heal on cooldown. I want to use the warning arrow and then I want to use the Easter light right after on this Gandalf. Okay, Gandalf, let's use Easter Light, kill his Gandalf if we can, would be nice. I don't know if he has heal or not, but if he doesn't have heal, we can kill him. We have all the power points now collected from this spell, but we cannot have any more power points. He's low, but he might be beating me in also with them. With the heal. If he has heal, it's over for me. Does he have heal? Come on, does he have heal? Oh, he has the shield bubble! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And Farami just killed again off. Oh, that's bad, actually. I mean, it's we are not defeated, but that's gonna hurt me a lot. Because now, I need to revive my Gandalf. But first of all, I need to revive the Citadel, you know? I mean, Gondor, you are annoying me. You will be pee Guys, we need to change the plan. Our plan was to kill Isengard first and go for the Gondor last. But this Gondor triggered me so much now that he will, be, he will pay for this. He will pay for this. He killed my Gandalf and you cannot simply kill my Gandalf and get away with it. That's, hey, where are we here? What the, what the heck is going on? What the heck is going on? You will pay for this. Okay, I, hopefully this Isengard will leave me alone. 
because I will be busy now defend, uh, defeating this Gondor. But I need first of all my Gandalf back. In the meantime, we can focus again on the map control. Always do something. RTS games are not for sitting in the base and doing nothing. Even when you're a casual player, that's the one thing. You need to put, you need to kind of get your APM, your action per minute, as high as you potentially can. That's the best way of improvement if you want, if you want to get a better player, not only in this game, but also in any other macro beast game. Like, multiple actions are required. We need to build the bees, require, you know, units, upgrades, move around, get settlements, demolish buildings, destroy buildings, get heroes, use abilities, use power points. Lots of stuff has to be done. And when you get your EPM high, your action per minute, you will automatically, slowly but surely, get better. And it's a slow improvement. And I need to say that everyone who's playing now multiplayer in the last two months with us, they've also lots of new players joining the multiplayer scene. I'm very happy about that. And I gotta tell you that every one of them is getting incredibly fast, incredible good. And I'm, you know, we will have a BFME, the 2v2 tournament is gonna come to an end very, very soon. This Sunday, I mean today, actually, uh, not today, yesterday, because this video is gonna be actually, I think we have another video for tomorrow. <laughs> Um, this one is going to be at Monday, but it's Sunday, like, when you watch this yesterday, we will have the Grand Finals of the 2v2 tournament, and then we will also start planning our, you see it, the 1v1 tournament for Give Me One. And also, this time I will also participate myself, and trust me, there will be lots of players who have the chance, definitely, and also the skill that can beat me. And I'm excited about this. I like to lose games. Like, maybe I'm a different person. I genuinely enjoy losing games. Because I feel like I'm lo I'm learning more about losing games than actually winning games. Then I can only get better. And that's the one thing. When you have a mindset that can say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to play. If I lose, I will just lose one more time and one more time and one more time until I don't lose anymore and I will start winning. Then this game is the right game for you guys. And also, very quick information, we found out there is like a much much better way to play Battle for Middle Earth games online with way less lag. And it's called Redmin VPN, so you can download that for free and then be connected to our network, which is called BFME1 patch 2.22, and the password is best patch B in big letters, all together. Um, and we are playing now on this for a while, and if you want to learn more about this, you can also join our Discord. And it's just so much better than Game Ranger. You have no more network problems, your connection problems. It's way better to play on this because it's way less laggy. So if you want to give it a shot, you can join our Discord and let me know. I will help you out to set it up and then boom, we go rock and roll, baby. Now, Gondor, I'm coming for you, boy. I'm coming for you now, Gondor. With my trebuchet, Ranger army and Gondor Knights. Look at our beast, dude. Our beast is so sexy. Like, look at how many trebuchet we have on the field, on the wall. <laughs> like, that's the one thing about map control, you know? Map control is so good. When you have map control, you can do anything you want. I would love to summon eagles on this guy, but he has backup. <laughs> I would love to summon eagles. Can I catch him with the lightning sword? Oh, that was close. Close, 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 but not close enough. Okay, let the siege begin. And uh, we've also Cloud Break for this done if we need it. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna use Cloud Break actually, because this Rohirrim, they wanna kill my catapults. Okay, stun them. You shall not pass. You shall not move. He's actually using Lightning Sword on us, but we killed like almost every single Rohirrim from the summon. That's very good. Safety level 10 combo. Okay, that's very good actually. We can. Oh, he wanna. What is, what is he gonna do? Hello? Oh, you wanna really do this? <laughs> he, we wanna die for a trebuchet? Really? Farami, show your quality! Faramir! Farami, do you see Faramir, dude? Farami is popping off! Dude, also his Farami was able to kill my Gandalf. What is happening to Farami lately? I think I'm, I kind of complained about him so much. I was kind of making so many jokes about Faramir that he all of a sudden is popping off. I like that. Okay, let the siege begin. Let the siege begin. We have also EOD for the worst case scenario. But you saw the timing with the... Cloud break that was actually very important. Oh, okay. I mean, the thing is, he has also trebuchet on top of the wall. I'm pretty tempted to use EOD to kill them. Because it's gonna be annoying when we go inside. They will keep shooting at us all the time. And that's gonna be kind of horrible <laughs> to deal with. So I'm pretty tempted to use EOD. Dude, the free for all games, dude. I gotta be honest, I think I enjoy them more lately. Especially because of the new maps now coming out. And that's. 
Like, guys, I'm playing this game for many, many years, and, you know, after some point, you, it's becoming repeatedly, you play on the same map all the time, and it's kind of, I don't like it, you know? That's why I'm so happy when we get always a new map. It's so refreshing, it's like playing a new game, you know? I like it. Because each map requires lots of different strategies. Like, your strategy base is kind of based on the map you are playing, on the faction and on the base. On, on the map, I mean, you know? And the thing is, when you play multiple games or hundreds of games on the same pa on the same map, then you kind of are like a robot. You know what you are doing, and there is nothing new anymore, you know? But the new maps, they require lots of attention. You need to kind of develop a strategy, try to execute it perfectly to make it work. And I like this a lot. My level 2 Gondonite, it's okay. Okay, I mean, here's too many... Ah, I'm gonna use EOD here, guys. It's pointless. I don't wanna lose too many units. I don't wanna go inside and then lose everything. We gotta use EOD. And kill the trebuchet on top of the wall. Then we can go in with Gandalf. His Gandalf is dead. Uh, heroes have, like, a long dead timer now in the patch 2.22. That also got changed. At the beginning, the heroes were actually coming out in no time. It was, like, a big issue, to be honest. Like, you can kill a hero, like, 30 seconds later, the hero is back. That's not what we are looking for. Now, the timers depend also on the, on the level. So the higher level a hero is, the more or the longer the dead timer is going to be. So there is going to be definitely a bit more punishment for losing heroes, besides only money. And my AOD couldn't kill any of this, <laughs> any of this trebuchet. But we got, I'm talking too much and I'm playing, sorry. I'm talking too much. Oh, he's going to call it boys. And okay, Gondor, who was killing our Gandalf, has been defeated. And now it's turning from, um, you know... Or player free for all into a 1v1 situation. And we also defeated Mordor. We defeated Mordor, we defeated Gondor, and now the last player remaining is Isengard. It's one of these games in which we have to defeat everybody else. Because I am playing aggressive, you know what I'm saying? People don't like to play against me in free for all. <laughs> because I can understand that. They want to have fun, they want to build up an army and stuff like this, but I can't. I need to do something, right? <laughs> I need to move around and fight all the time. Okay. Rally together, knights. Rise. Swords. I'm so happy, guys. I mean, I, I cannot say it, you know, enough. Thank you so much for the huge support you have shown out to the channel. And also, most of you guys actually going even next level and then, you know, following me on my Twitch channel from the link in the description down below. Really appreciate it. Especially when I get to see you or meet, to meet you in one of the live streams. It really means a lot to me. I have never imagined, never ever would have imagined that we will get this many subscribers on YouTube channel, this many views on the channel, on the videos, and also this many, you know, viewers on the Twitch live streams. Thank you guys. Thank you. It really means a lot. You are heroes. Every single one of you guys. Okay, level 10. So now we need to kind of be careful. I, the thing is, I don't know how close he is for the for the EU, for the Balrog summon. If the Balrog summon, he has the chance eventually to crash my base. But now we need to be definitely better with the Balrog way way faster than before. So the plan is to nerf the ultimate summons in long term because I genuinely don't in, don't like the idea of losing a full game you play for like 30 minutes to one single summon crashing your entire castle that doesn't seem like a good idea for me you know what i'm saying especially in competitive level if you play like you have like an army advantage the other guy is camping it out and then boom he summons balrog especially in free for all maps because remember the golden rule is that you cannot buy a second castle which would mean in the previous versions that at some point, if the evil faction would get Balrog, you would have lost the game. Regardless of what you do, the Balrog was always able to kill the full base of Gondor or Rohan every single time. And even if you are leading, if you have an army, you can't do anything about Balrog. You cannot stop him. Unless you have your own EOT you want to use against Balrog. You know? But even that is not very efficient because Balrog can still kill your EOD. It's not like the EOD can one-shot Balrog, that's not possible, you know what I'm saying? I just, they genuinely don't enjoy the idea. That's why we nerfed them a lot. We nerfed the duration of them, we nerfed the cooldown of them, we also nerfed the EOD damage against structures, we nerfed Balrog duration. We don't want to over-nerf them, but we want to not make, we, we want to make sure that they are not able to single-handedly win the game for you. You need to have an army to win the game, you know what I'm saying? EOD can kill army, but AOD can't kill bees. And you need to have an army 
to kill the, to finish off the player but balrog was not like this you can summon balrog underneath of an army to one shot them but you could also summon balrog to just kill the full beast by himself you know and that kind of is too much dude this is too much i have cloud break i can summon the eagles very soon i want to make sure that he's not getting the chance to cripple my gandalf hold on a second i see lords i gotta always keep an eye on lords now we can summon the eagles and kill lords just kill lords that's all I, all you all you gotta do oh my goodness my trebuchet are hitting very hard though he killed all his army please lords die faramir show your quality oh, faramir look faramir okay, faramir was overkill but it's okay i like the attempt and now oh okay while i was trying to kill lords actually we killed this full army with trebuchet dude the trebuchet are sitting they are so unfair, you know what I mean? They are so strong. Holy guacamole. Look at the map control, boys. We have, like, everything is red in our color. Four Feolingas. They have also a new sound effect for the end. And, you know, remember the previous version was like, come my friends, the ends are going to war. That's changed. Now, Tribute is gonna say, the last match of the ends begins. I think it sounds better, it's more clear sound without any background music. And, you know, they are also looking for the Eagles, but it's hard to find one. <laughs> Besides, when Peregrine 2 is saying the Eagles, the Eagles are coming. Again, as you guys know or see, they are trying to put lots of quality of life changes to make the games a bit more enjoyable, you know? Not only for the players in online, but also for the casual players. And if you have any knowledge about actually art design, or coding or you know modeling you can also let me know please in discord because i would be you know we need somebody who can actually help us to create new hd models for the for the units and heroes in the game to make the game also look much much better so we have a coder we have a person with the animations we have a person with the graphical image image design but we are still lacking of somebody who can make maps more maps and also who can make eventually hd models Again, you know, it's not a paid job, guys. We are doing this all for free, you know what I'm saying? It's like a hobby because we love this game so much. So if you are interested in helping out, I would love to meet you in the Discord. It would be, would be amazing, you know, to make the buildings look a bit, a bit better in higher definition, to make the models look better and everything around it better. It would be a shame if this game die. And I have a son coming up very soon in June. And I will train him to be a replacement for me for the next gen for the next generation. You know what I'm saying? And then he will have a son and so on. Boom! You're gonna hit like a truck, just like Gandalf did. You shall not pass. Rally together, knights. I mean, I think this was a good game. Oh, he summoned the Balrog. But I think can survive this. I think. I'm not gonna look. Rally together, knights. Okay, you know, Rally together, knights. I'm not gonna look. Fly, because I can't do anything. My my EOD is on cooldown. My Gandalf is far away. Oh my goodness, he's popping off the Balrog. The thing is, you see the nerf. That's a. I mean, our base is very good. Why? We have a level three siege works, level three steeple, and level three archer range, and he can not, not one shot any of these with his breath fire. That's a huge um, thing. Then you know the game goes a while, you want to make sure that you have multiple level 3 production buildings inside your castle, which Balrog can't one-shot anymore. So you can barely survive, but it's better than being defeated. You see, the, the, you see this? My stable barely is able to survive, so he needs one more hit, but he has not the time anymore. But even now he dealt crazy amount of damage to the beast, but now it's our turn. And again, EOD all alone won't, won't win us the game, but we have a huge army. And this is only possible because of the insane amount of leadership, uh, insane amount of map control we got. Like, we have the money to replace everything we lose, right? As long as we don't lose the full game, we can always get back. And that's why I always keep saying, map control is the key to victory. When you want to win your games, always, always, at any stage of the game, keep focusing on the map control. Very, very important. Okay, so now it's my turn. I summon you to fulfill your oath. What say you? Oh, he used war, war chant on that units, like you like to see it. Look, you see, he's focusing my Gandalf again. With everything that he got. Every single tower is focusing my Gandalf. He crippled me, by the way. Lord is trying to fight against Istari? You are trying to fight against Gandalf? 
you are a Uruk and I'm a angel. And basically, Ganav is like an angel, right? So the Maya, you know, there are like Mayas, they are like Valars, they are like Iru Iliwata. Oh, I think Saruman just came out. What a timing. Dude, did you guys see the timing from Saruman? He came out as I was trying to kill the orphan with the lightning sword. The, the, the orphan got destroyed and he was tanking the full lightning sword. <laughs> what a timing. Dude, I forgot about my Rohirrim behind. Let's use them too. Uh, my bad. Okay. Did you all play, guys? I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you also enjoyed the new map. Uh, for me personally, it's a little bit too big. I think the distances between the fact, you know, between my castle and the Isengard castle, especially, is like a big distance. But I think it's a symmetrical map. Symmetrical maps are always good for the balance. I think nobody has advantage. Everybody has like the same amount of settlements, the same amount of creeps. And if you did enjoy this, please make sure to leave a like and also subscribe for more like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep eating like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.